This is an experiment. The video quality is a bit odd, but it's still going to be funny. Go this watch is, it. Uh, this is reverse trivia cards like we used to do on, on the podcast. Back in the good old days. <laughs> I remember those! <laughs> Liar! What? What is it good for? Spider! <laughs> That's a big spider! Wow. You're a big spider. This is the technical difficulties and today we are going old school. I have in front of me a deck of classic trivia question cards. I'm going to read out the answers and all these folks have to do is guess the questions. Joining me today, please welcome, he reads books, you know it's Chris Joel. Hello. Everybody's favourite Gary Brannan. Gary Brannan. This earth of majesty, this seat of Mars, this other Eden demi-paradise, a fortress created by nature for herself. This blessed plot, this earth, this realm, this kitchen. He's been practicing. He has. Have you been? Have you just been doing that since January when we last Pretty recorded? Much. <laughs> yeah. oh, Gary, the baby <laughs> shit itself. I can't. I'm practicing my monologues. Is <laughs> John of God for fuck's sake? <laughs> and the bounciest man on the internet, Matt Gray. His seat's made of Mars. Mine's made of Kit Kat. Every question they get right is a point and a ding, and the special prize for particular good answers, which is mystery biscuits. So you know, much weirder without it there. <laughs> it's weird without an audience this now, isn't it? It's, it's, it's just I love the spectacular silence. <laughs> <laughs> there might as well be a bell tolling quietly <laughs> throughout the whole thing. And today we start with Hadrian's Wall. Oh, shit, different format. Whoa! Uh, <laughs> so I've got the uh, the answer. All you need to do is guess the question. What did I have to climb to get my ball back when I live next door to Hadrian? <laughs> Hadrian's conifer hedge. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually why they put it up there in the first place, obviously. Well, in fairness, I mean, the Hadrian's Wall today isn't that big. I mean, obviously, the answer is going to be... What was made with Hadrian's bricks, obviously. Fact, he's right. Well, yeah. What is what, what is a big... I was going to say bricky stone. <laughs> yeah. Sort of across where the Scottish border isn't. Oh, I know the answer. What's that Oasis song about? After Wonder all, <laughs> you're my Hadrian's Wall. <laughs> I really wanted to come out with a different Oasis song. I couldn't realise I couldn't think of any other Oasis song. <laughs> Good. Soon the wounds will heal. <laughs> Hadrian's Wall, chaps. Okay. You, you're not Possible quite close answers, enough. You're not quite... A defensive wall between the Roman Empire and Caledonia. I mean, yeah. It... What was built to keep the bloody Scots out? That is much closer <laughs> and I'll give you the point. Wow. That. Well, that must have played well north of wherever the border was at the time. <laughs> what was constructed to separate England from Scotland? Brexit. <laughs> Hey! The lack of square sausage. Also fair. Uh, your next one is mountain climbing. What are mountains good for? Absolutely nothing. <laughs> <Same here. laughs> what extreme sport are goats known for? They are, you know, ropes and crampons and everything. Yeah. <laughs> and Gary gets the point. What sport uses crampons? <laughs> <laughs> is mountain climbing a sport? Yeah. What else really? is it? It's, it's not arduous. It's, it's one of those things that gets worse when you try and make it competitive. Well, it starts with the kind of thing where slow and steady really does win the race on that one. Uh, two fathoms or 12 feet. How deep is a thing? Yes. How deep is your love? <laughs> <laughs> is your love? You're both right, apart from the last two words. It is two words we're How deep for. is... Are things. <laughs> how deep are things? No, Pat. <laughs> we're, we're, looking two, we're looking for how deep is something. It's quite a famous... A league. Thing. <laughs> well, it's something you would drop off the back of a ship. Oh, a Your plum enemies. bob. Uh, not quite. Oh, it's, it's the knotty it rope thing. A, knots in a knot in a bob. One specific knot in a knot in a bob. The, the long far knot. <laughs> if the drop you, knot. If you drop anchor. The, <laughs> if you drop slip knot. If you drop the knot in a thing <laughs> off the back of your boat. We all say Boat in a bob, please. And it stops at two fathoms or twelve feet. It is at a certain mark. Mark my word. Mark Armand. <laughs> uh, it's where a famous author got his name from. Mark Twain. Point. <laughs> off. <laughs> Two fathoms or twelve feet is Mark Twain. Bloody hell! Makes a certain and he wrote all those novels so. when he was out in the wet like that. <laughs> <laughs> it's very inspirational! <laughs> Bracing! <laughs> it's got a floating writing desk on a lilo. <laughs> Get in! Lilo! So what was Mark Twain called before it was Mark Twain then? Samuel Clemens. Was there another Samuel Clemens or did he just like the idea of being a measurement of water? I think he just liked the idea of being a measurement of water. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to be a measurement of water? I don't know. This isn't Call our normal... Call me a pint. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't our normal format. I can't look it up. <laughs> Ed Stewart. Ed Stewart, Stewart, presenter of Junior Choice on Radio 2. And Cracker Jack. Please say that's the point. Uh, yes. That's the point. Hey! Hey! Who is Radio Stewpot? Although I am completely behind you just kind of 
maxing out all possible questions there. <laughs> also, biscuits. <laughs> one shot, one kill. Yeah, yeah. all right. Biscuits, biscuits. Oh, for something from 1984. <laughs> yeah, but Gary was already 35 then, so, you know, he remembers it better than the rest of us. <laughs> I remember the pound note. <laughs> I remember the pound note. I've been to Scotland. Yeah, I've been to individual pound notes in Scotland. And Jersey. Jersey has them. They're pound green. notes? Yeah, yeah, pound notes. So it's really confusing. I gave the bus driver a five pound note. And he gives me like four notes back. I'm like, oh, okay, this Rich! is. Oh, he <laughs> said, winning! The Scottish strip clubs with pound notes. <laughs> <laughs> to be, to be fair, what's the alternative? Like, what, what's the alternative? Getting a load of pound coins and trying to. <laughs> yeah, they'd, have to they'd have to wear big pants and seal them up at the bottom <laughs> so that it didn't fall through. Just jingling around like a Morris dancer. <laughs> Technical difficulties live from a strip club. That would be so uh, uncomfortable. I think oh, we yeah. should do that. I was going to say, it depends which, which side of the strip club. <laughs> Just me leaning on a pole going, hey, no. I was going to say, as, as, I I am, as I am, I'm not at all. <laughs> and here for you now, it's Chris, everybody. If, if you're you want, <laughs> if you're wondering how committed we are to that joke, it's this far <laughs> and no further. <laughs> you told me off last time I did a show na half naked and we weren't even on stream then. Did I? One did of the 24 hour shows, it pissed it down while I was cycling in. I did about the first six <laughs> hours stripped to the waist and you told me off repeatedly. You you did and I, I remember that because you... you Body wandered. for radio, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> you, you walked in... You immediately <laughs> took off your T-shirt in the manner of a man taking off his T-shirt for someone else, which is so you grabbed both sides of it and pulled over like that yeah. instead of just hoiking it over. Yeah. And went, ah, that's the smell of a man. <laughs> <laughs> now, I, rem I don't remember saying this, but that does sound exactly like me. Next up, Davis. Johnson, your move. I raise you Peterson. Mornington Crescent. <laughs> Surely. <laughs> Most common surname in Wales. Oh. Now. Second most common surname in Wales. Have a point. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Joneses. <laughs> Next up, the Rainbow Warrior. <laughs> Good luck, Joneses. <Go> <laughs> All right, let's just put it out there. Gay rights activist, have at it. <laughs> uh, activist, certainly. Or uh, something close to activist. Yeah, it's a sodding boat that got sunk by the French. Uh, who owned Green the boat? Peace. Green Greenpeace. Yes, you're absolutely right. Is that the one that they stormed Rockall? With. I don't think Greenpeace ever stormed Rockall. Yes, they did. Fact. Why? They, for about 40 days, they had someone on Rockall, fact, um, to protest the fact that everyone was going, oh, I want this oil. So they're trying to claim it for themselves. Do you want to explain yeah. what Rockall is? Here? Rockall is a rock in Slightly the middle of Rockall. Fuck 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 oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> about 230 miles from the leftist bit of Scotland and yes. more miles from bits of Danish Greenland and Iceland, and everyone wants a bit of it because oil. Uh, we currently say it's ours because international diplomacy. The only fact that oil, British oil based fact. That I only found out last week. British oil-based oil fact is that no mixed with water-based <laughs> fact. In the 90s, <laughs> <laughs> you can just one floats on top of the other, just and definitely don't heat it. <laughs> now on the fact emulsifier <laughs> <laughs> format format. <laughs> On the left side of the room, we have some wet facts. <laughs> On the right side of the room, we have some greasy facts. You must combine these in such a way that they gel. Coagulated knowledge. Hello, Stephen Mulhern. He <laughs> says he'll do it. <laughs> that was just an answer phone, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> it's an unnecessary burn on hard work of Stephen Mulhern there, but never mind. I'm sure, hey. he, I'm sure he'll be happy with it from his pile of money. <laughs> During the war, Britain obviously was running short on oil, cause cause U boats. They had to drill for oil in Britain and they found an absolute shit ton. Britain's oil was very good, very pure, could fuel a Spitfire, and was in Sherwood Forest. Yes, it was, because I grew up near a couple of oil fields in the middle of Nottinghamshire. Yeah, which they brought over because British oil riggers were so slow and shit at their job, they brought over a load of American oil riggers. All called Derek. All called Derek. Uh, to work in a that, that, was a that was a Derek joke. No one liked the <laughs> oils are made. Oils are drilled on Derek's. Are they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That Derek is a Derek. Really? <laughs> Dead. <laughs> So they brought over a lot of American oil workers to spend out the war in Nottinghamshire drilling for oil. Yeah, entirely true. There's still an oil field there. I think it's now an oil field museum, but they still have some of the nodding donkeys up in little bits of what was once Sherwood Forest. There you go. Huh. Your next answer is 
Canada. I don't know, can you? You're not my dad. <laughs> How would someone in Wales ask permission to do something? Canada! <laughs> what country lies directly south of something? Russia. I don't Where know. The f***ing planet are you from? <laughs> because the Mercator projection distorts things and yeah, things can actually that... be in a different position based on yeah. a different map Canada's projection. Canada's still not south of Russia. <laughs> well, I don't know if it curves. Kazakhstan is south of Russia. Now, you are right that it's curving in a way you wouldn't expect. <laughs> <laughs> Doctor. <laughs> <laughs> the North Pole in one of the ways of defining oh, it. In all of the ways of defining it, yes, but that's not the thing here. There's oh, something yes. That's um, the point. That's the, what country <laughs> lies directly south of the, of the North Pole? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> every, literally, lot. literally every every country. <laughs> is it that Canada is south of something, or that something is south of Canada? It's what country lies directly south of something? America. What city in America is directly north of Canada? If you go south from this American city, you reach Canada. Detroit. Yes. Ah, Have a point. Yeah, because of the. No. Oh, because yes. Canada curves yeah, down so far. Yeah, it does. You are absolutely right. Canada's schlong hands directly above the balls of Detroit. <laughs> I think that's the wrong way round. Yes. Uh, but, <laughs> but yes, <laughs> close enough. <laughs> the balls of yeah, Detroit. Yeah, because you cross east west over the river, don't you? Yes, you do. Yeah. This yes. is why I'm not allowed at the UN anymore. <laughs> Your last question is Napoleon's victories. It's not what he calls his balls. <laughs> What hung down over Prussia? <laughs> Les Arc de Triomphe. If it's got that much of a curve in it, do see your doctor. Uh, unbelievably, Gary, you get the point. <laughs> <laughs> what is the Arc de Triomphe memorial to? And the answer is Napoleon's it's victories. Balls. Victories. <laughs> victories. So in serious, in, in all truth, the, the Arc de Triomphe is, a, is more of a monument to bad traffic planning, if you ever go <laughs> yes. there. As it's a Roundabout. Isn't it a three or four lane roundabout? It's terrifying. I spent. Mo- I went up the Arc de Triomphe once. I spent most of the time. Did you now? <laughs> most of the time, just screaming out of it, watching traffic. <laughs> <laughs> oh in an actual car driving, not trying to walk across or anything like that. No, just... I was up the. Well, I, I did the sensible thing of getting the little underpass that yeah, takes you yeah, to yeah. beneath. There's of, an underpass that gets you to the Arc de Triomphe. You don't actually have to run across the murderous traffic lanes that you obviously did <laughs> as a child. <laughs> <laughs> Les enfants! Les enfants! Oh, oh, on, a, yeah. on a school trip! Oh, <laughs> with other children! There's an underpass that takes you to a little door in the bottom. Well, sh! I'm sorry, <laughs> door, in the the door in the bottom! Door in the bottom, Gary! I was miming the lift that you get in. It'll give you some kind of lift. I am never, ever going in a multi story building with you. <laughs> I've just done a colonoscopy. <laughs> Come on, Chris, it's time to go to the fourth floor! How far are we going? <laughs> there was an Arc de Triomphe story there about an underpass, Gary. <laughs> and the lack of it. But I spent most time at the top of the Arc de Triomphe screaming at the traffic. Because it is genuinely like a four or five lane roundabout and people just cut across all three lanes just to get off whatever they feel like it. It's terrifying. Is it like a horse tornado but with uh, Renault Twingos? <laughs> the f***'s a horse tornado? Have you not heard the phrase? You know, first of all, carousel. And yes, <laughs> that's, that's the word. <laughs> so, have you not heard the phrase horse tornado no. before? Okay. Well, it's a horse tornado. <laughs> Like, that's been going around for a while. What so I love is, is that that came to your head before the word carousel. Oh, I never call them horse. I always call them horse. I can never think. It's a much more sensible word, a carousel. That doesn't even say what it does. A horse tornado is exactly what it does. It's horses. Tornading. Tornading. Unbelievably, at the end of the show, congratulations, Max, you win. Hey! <laughs> you win a uh, spinal procedure performed by an anarchist punk band. It's a chumba wumba lumba puncture. <laughs> <laughs> with that, we say thank you to Chris Joel, to Gary Brannan, to Matt Gray. I've been Tom Scott, and we'll see you next time.